any task that you do, you can either use capital or you can use labor or you can use some mix of the two. Uh, in this area, it seems like you could use a lot of technology and systems, but on the other hand, you can have experienced people um, to do the monitoring. And like anything else, it seems like you really need a good mix of both of those. Um, so how do you focus on, on how you properly balance all that together? Well, I think, you know, you know your teams. Um, I think smaller companies tend to hire pretty experienced people um, in general. And, you know, if you are a smaller company, I think you know what your, um, you know, what your team is, is capable of and what you can rely on them for. Um, you know, I, and I think essentially if if you're if you think about it you know we've been doing this sort of with a people approach for years and years and years and, and we're just now starting to rely on technology and I think we don't have to you know it's not a completely um, it's not a cut and dry change right because we're still giving you know very good valuable input into those systems so if the input is good, I feel that, that you have that much more of a reliable system. So, so it, is, it is a balance, but you do need to have people who you know, truly know what they're doing and know what to look for. Okay, and another question that just popped up, it says, what insights do you have about protocol design and how to include RBM in the concept stage? So I guess if you're starting a trial, is this something you want to uh, think about very early on in the process? And are there ways to incorporate it into your protocol design? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I began at the beginning sort of, you know, talking about terminology and I think quality by, by design um, is, you know, just, just so important and, and um, it, there is some, some resistance in, in organizations to adopting it because it slows things down. And it, it does so you know, for, for a reason because we want to make sure that our teams are thinking about protocol, um, how we're going to um, make sure that our systems are appropriate. And, and the one thing that wasn't mentioned that, that is, is really key to all this is um, also CRF design. Um, so if you are collecting information that you don't need to, um, you know, it, it may seem harmless, but, you know, anytime you do that, you're, you're directing resources away from things that matter. So um, protocol design, CRF design, um, effective monitoring plans. So that's the transition from quality by design to risk-based monitoring. It, it should be specified in what your monitoring plan is. And if your monitoring plan is driven by a system that's driven by key risk indicators that you've prospectively defined at the beginning of the study, then, you know, you have set up your, your risk-based monitoring, you know, right, right at the beginning. And, you know, from there, it should be pretty much autopilot. You're going to be, you know, checking in and making sure that things are going according to plan. And then, you know, you can't forget that no system is going to be able to effectively capture every risk, right? Um, there's gonna be things that come out of the blue and surprise you. I'm sure we all have war stories where, you know, things were unexpected. And, um, and I, I, you know, I think, I think it ties together linearly. So you, you, you set out to have a quality protocol, quality data collection tools, thoughtful plans to, you know, capture and monitor and report and then you follow up with, you know, a very um, disciplined review of your data on an ongoing basis and you tweak as you need to. Um, 